and welcome to another episode. Tonight I'm handing this leaf over to a new customer and it needs an MOT. A lot of people ask us about the running costs of electric vehicles, what's involved, what's really needed. Now I know the MOT tester really well and he's agreed that we can film, so that's where I'm going now, so you lot can all find out. Our garage of choice is nothing special. In fact, a diesel specialist and a very good one at that. Prices range from as little as £25 up to £55 and having an EV will make no difference to the cost. The garage needs no extra equipment, in fact less equipment and less time. The test is approximately 15 minutes quicker for an EV, so an MOT tester is potentially earning more. First things first, our tester Jan takes all the relevant details from our leaf and then pops them into the DVLA database for a time slot. Back in the car, he runs through all the interior and exterior lights. Some well-placed mirrors make this a one-man job. And the same for the front. All okay so far. After checking all the seat belts, wipers and interior controls, and a lesson from me on how to operate the parking brake, he's out and ready to get our leaf up in the air. Now our leaf is pretty low mileage at 10,000 miles, and I'm not expecting any issues. However, I've MOT'd a LEAF and an EMV200, both with over 85,000 miles, and they've sailed straight through. Here, like any car, the suspension and brake system and all the visible components get a good visual check. All looks good to me. There's also a mechanic inside, jumping up and down on the foot brake and working the handbrake while it's inspected from underneath. What differs here is that the tester has no fuel tank, fuel lines, fuel filter, exhaust, CAT, DPF or any other associated components to look for. He's also unlikely to find any oil leaks, as that can also lead to a failure. Next, the front axle is lifted to bring the suspension to maximum droop. This will show any play in steering or suspension joints much easier but also allows easier access to each wheel arch and allows full rotation of each rim. The same is carried out on the back axle for the same reasons. Jan now brings our leaf down to working height and he can now get a good visual into the near side front wheel arch where, amongst other things, he is checking anti-roll bar drop links, CV joints and gaiters, play in the wheel bearings and the condition and size of the tyres. He then repeats this on the near side rear. Obviously no steering components on the rear, so it doesn't take quite as long. And then again on the offside rear, and finally up to the offside front. And so far, according to his failure paperwork, it all seems to be going quite well. Now, things have changed over the years. Once upon a time, the MOT tester would have been hanging off the steering and suspension components with a pry bar. But not so now. This funky bit of kit has made it predominantly a one-man operation and allows the tester to see the components under real operational conditions. All top stuff. And that's it. Yang can now let the leaf down off the jacks and lower the lift back down onto floor level. I feel like I'm getting some special treatment. I've never seen him put a floor mat in one of our cars before. I'm guessing that's something to do with him being on camera. Next up, it's time for the brake test. Now the leaf shouldn't have any issues here as the brakes have limited use due to regen braking. But contrary to popular belief, this can also be negative. Reading the brake pressure indicator on the wall, the tester is able to accurately see just how well it performs on the brake test. I suspect if there's going to be a problem, it'll be here. And I'm pleased to say, no issues here. This is a point every ICE car owner hates, and let's be honest, every EV owner enjoys with a smug grin on their face. The exhaust emissions test is bizarrely one of the most uncommon reasons for failure and that certainly concerns me as to how stringent this test is. 
Obviously, we weren't going to miss an opportunity to video an MOT tester swinging his test probe under the rear of our leaf, scratching his head and looking like he doesn't know what's going on. And that's it. The details are uploaded onto the DVLA database and I can wait around for a pass certificate. Good times. Whilst I'm waiting, I take notice of all the warning signs relating to diesel smoke testing and cam belt conditions. Something else you won't have to worry about as an EV owner. And this is fantastic. A schematic showing just how complex a modern common rail diesel system is. And how many parts are listed here? 41. And I can tell you that's not even half of it. So that's it. It's done, it's passed and off to be delivered to its new owner. Oh, I nearly forgot, I did do one repair prior to the MOT. I topped up the screen wash. And that's 12 months of painless, cheap motoring just there. It really doesn't get any easier.